My name is Roman and it's Martin Watchhouse and welcome back on my BigQuery Google Ads tutorial. I hope you enjoyed the first video, I was a little bit boring, probably too much, but nevertheless we're going to more practical stuff from right now, from right now, from, oh my English, it always do this stuff to me, I don't know why. Anyway, we go to practical stuff right now and be careful because this is going to be very interesting. So the last time we'll run some query here, we opened the campaign table and showed and had a look on the, what was the latest uh, data there. It's not very useful for you right now, but it will be very soon. So let's go through the SQL and understand what is what. SQL by default have several fields that are very important. First is, so, sorry, several words. First is select. When you say select, you need, um, you kind of give a command, you kind of uh, explicitly say what exactly from the table you want to see. And imagine when you go to Google Ads and then you find some keyword report, then you change the columns, then you add some conversion there, or probably a quality score, then you push download as CSV, open in Excel, and then uh, pick, uh, or pick all the data there, like select all the data, and then you push add, pivot table, and then you get the data, yeah? So imagine you don't need to go to Google Ads, download a CSV, uh, find the columns, all this stuff is done inside select. Complicated? Probably. Sometimes I'm really, really confusing, even myself, but let's have a look how it actually works. So campaign is a huge table and uh, it's a view, but for simplicity, it's a table for now. And we have a schema. Example, for example, I wanna see, um, I wanna see campaign names that I have. Let's have campaign name. And this is the only field I want to see here. And you see also the data that I'm going to process was reduced because I only take one column from one uh, view where I have the filtering by partition uh, field. So here are all campaign names I have. Some of them in English, some of them in Russian, some of them I have no idea because I have some accounts that are connected for me for ages. and. Despite the fact that I had a lot of data inside the campaign table, when I run this query, I only have one single column because this is one single column that I decided to select. Imagine I wanted to rename it. I don't know why, but just in case, if you wanted to rename something, you need to write as and then say campaign name. Uh, no, no, let's make it fun. Uh, something. Um, unreal and then underscore pony why i don't know because when you do such thing you rename the tape the uh, you rename the column name in the output data it might be not very useful right now because uh, campaign name just does make sense when you use the uh, as a column name but in the future you will have to deal with it for example you have two different tables that have exactly the same column name, but they are unrelated. In that case, you have to rename the columns. If you wanted to add another um, uh, column to your output, you put a comma at the end of the string, but you actually can do it everywhere because uh, SQL doesn't depend on any spaces, tabs, uh, new lines, or case sensitivity. SQL is like, really don't care. You can write in any way you want. For example, you can do select with a small k, or you can put le as a big ones. Why? Just because you like it this way. Or you can put a few several lines there and put something after that. Just to make code clear and easy to understand, I usually just, um, I usually suggest to go and write SQL this way, or in other way, it's also very popular to put comma in the beginning of the next line. And why is it popular? I will tell you a little bit later. So let's imagine we want to see something else. For example, we want to see um, what can be useful for us. If uh, enhanced CPC enabled is actually true. Let's run this query. And you see, I don't have any campaign. Oh, I have some campaigns with uh, enhanced CPC enabled. And some of them are false. I personally don't like this field at all. 
and I would probably would like to see all the campaigns that I uh, have with the enhanced CPC enabled to go there and to turn them off. To do that, I need to do filtering. We already have one filtering here where latest date equals date to date. Let's add one more. It's going to be and this field equals, but you need to understand what this field might be equal to. This schema that I'm going through all the time, it's uh, for those who use Mac, it's command and then you click on this. Or for those who use Windows, it's control and you click on this and you see the schema or you can pick it on the left. Here you have the uh, information, what is the field and what does it mean? For example, it's date and this is a string and sometimes we have Boolean. When it's Boolean and in this case, I know that this field is actually Boolean. We can, yeah, here it is. Um, that means it can be true or false without any quotes, without anything at all. And here it is. Let's find where this field is actually true. Boom. This is my five campaigns. And this campaign I was uh, creating for Martin Washhouse, I believe, that have enhanced CPC enabled true. I can go there and I can pause them. But, uh, or change this, uh, sorry, change these settings by default, definitely. But what if my campaign is already paused? then I don't need to go there. This is just a setting that is was never fixed before, but the campaign is not running anymore. So let's only stay with the campaigns that have uh, campaign status enabled. And this might be a little bit complicated because I think, okay, campaign status also should be true or false, but no. Because campaign status is uh, has three different values. It can be uh, paused, it can be enabled, and, and it can be removed it can't be true or false. It is actually a string. I know that because I work with this data every day, but you don't. And you can go here in a P campaign and push preview. If you push this preview, you will see the data that is in a huge table and you can see which values are in this campaign status. For example, here I see that enabled is written as uh, with the capital letters and because this is a string it's in the quotes. It's actually a case sensitive field So if I run it right now I see that only one campaign is actually have this uh, settings true and it is enabled but if I change it to uh, small d to the lower case Then I will end up with having no results because this is a case sensitive field if you want to see which of the campaigns that have the settings are not enabled, then you need to make uh, to put this exclamation mark before the equal. Why exclamation mark? Don't even ask. It just people a lot of years ago decided, okay, if something does not equal, let's put an exclamation mark in the beginning. And everybody, yeah, yeah, that's a great idea. So that's why it's an exc exclamation mark. So here we have a lot of campaigns like four campaigns that have paused or removed. And if you want to see what actual status of them, again, we go to the next line, put comma, put campaign status there, and boom, we have another column that gives us the campaign status. This is how beautiful and simple it is to work with uh, BigQuery. Usually, at least it was for me like that, when I start working with BigQuery, I'm a little bit confused. I don't know what is the name of the columns, or I don't know what are the partition fields, I don't know how to filter, and you know what? It's normal. When you work with something new, you really don't know how this works. That's why you have to practice. In a future videos, I will show you a little bit more tricks, for example, how to work with the several accounts, how to work with the stats, or how to import this data to Google Sheets. But what's important for you right now is to go there right now to BigQuery and try to run a few of these queries. It also would be uh, cool if you go to, I don't know, accounts or ads and try to, uh, to replicate this small, simple query with ads table. Try to find ads that don't have the third headline and have a status enabled or those that have the third headline but have status removed. Uh, another more, another additional tweak for you, for example, when you don't want to, in this case, it's very simple. You have enabled, removed, and paused, but sometimes you have more than three or four or five different values, and you wanted to 
define several of them, you can say campaign status equals enabled, then copy this, put or, and then, then say post. But because or is like a plus and the n is like a multiply operation, so this will be done first because it's something and something and something like a multiply b multiply c and only in the end will be done this part you need to put brackets here or even a simpler way you can say that campaign status is one of several uh, values for example enabled or paused and this is the most convenient and most beautiful way of defining several values instead of or or whatever. In this case, I just say, give me all the campaigns where campaign status in is one, one of these two. Or in this case, for this exact report, it would be much more sense to say removed or paused. And just for you to know, one more thing, when you, uh, it's more convenient way to say when it's not enabled, it's not equals enabled, but it's much easier to read for human uh, kind of person, this kind of state. Because when you say it's not enabled, some people probably don't know which other statuses can be. For example, some people will only think about pause. Whereas when you write it this way, it's very explicitly says which campaign status you're actually looking for, removed or paused. It's up for you to decide. In this particular case, it, there is no big difference, but probably it would be much easier for you if you will try to use, in these cases, explicit way of saying. And it's very important to use brackets. Don't forget about the brackets. Subscribe to me, subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to add me on LinkedIn if you have any questions. And you also can add me on Medium. And leave your comments. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Even if I'm not able to ask you within a second or within a minute, some other people will be able to help you with the problem. And see you soon, guys. Hope you subscribe to this channel and bye-bye.